Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you've all been well. I apologize for keeping you so long. It's been about three or four weeks now since I've done a video, so I'm trying to get a little bit better, as I always say. Uh, I've got a treat for you guys today. I don't have the weapons with me currently. Uh, they're all down at my grandparents' house because it's just a pain in the butt trying to transport firearms all over the place from NC to Virginia and back. It's a pain. But uh, I got three different types of magazines or clips. I guess the one would be a clip technically. Mm. <laughs> uh, of three pretty common weapons, I'd say. Uh, most of you are going to know what they are, and I will post a video of uh, me shooting at least one or two of these. Maybe the third one, it's going to be kind of 50-50. Um, we'll see. Hopefully the time allows me to do it, so there's that. Uh, especially with it being the holidays. So I'm hoping to kick off the new year with some really nice, just solid content. I mean, I've got plenty of stuff to finally start filming, so I'm super stoked about it. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump right into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is a very classic 1911. I mean, you can't beat these magazines. Uh, now, notice this is a two-toned one. I know it's kind of hard. There you go. Um, what's funny is, is this was not out of a normal 1911A1. These, I actually got several of these mags with the original rounds uh, that were out of a 19, I think it was a 1913 dated uh, 1911 OG from World War One. Um, it's funny the rounds I got in this. Some of this were, or some of the rounds were pure, just brass ball, uh, dated 42 or 43. Which I was like, okay, it's pretty obvious. And then other rounds I got um, were 1917 dated, which is funny because I mean they'll obviously take these, but it also makes me think that uh, they might have been in a 1917 Colt or Smith and Wesson uh, revolver. Very common. Um, it's funny because some of those revolvers, like I said, the victory models, for example, most of them were either in 38 or 45. Uh, it's real, you know, dependent on your unit or what have you. I know, for example, a good, uh, really good example, so to speak, is the U.S. Cavalry Doctrine at that time, um, when the revolvers first were in use was that they remained in 45, whereas leg infantry officers and or NCOs that are in, or let's say you were in a position in which you needed to carry a pistol, uh, not necessarily a 1911, maybe it would have been a, uh, like you said, a 1917 revolver. Um, most of those would have been in 38. However, the cavalry had this odd doctrine of, oh, if we're gonna have it, it has to be in 45. For whatever reason, don't know. Uh, I think it kind of paid homage or homage to the uh, days of the Wild West where, you know, you're using single action armies and uh, things of that nature. But uh, as you can see, very stereotypical, nothing special about this one. Great piece of Americana right here in firearms history. So pretty standard. So next up, now this one's also very common. Uh, you got to have a big wallet or pocketbook to fire this, unfortunately. Um... The full auto ones are extremely expensive, anywhere between eighteen to like twenty-five thousand. It's absolutely bananas right now. Uh, you can get the Ohio Ordnance semi-auto ones. They used to be two, three, four grand. I've seen them go as high as eighty-five hundred dollars now. And next, if you haven't already guessed it, it is a Browning automatic rifle. This is a twenty-round BAR mag. Um, for us reenactors, like I said, it's pretty common to get the semi-auto ones. Like I said, if you have a full auto, you have very deep pockets. Very deep. Um, or you just got lucky. <laughs> um, as most of you know, there are three models. The 1918, 1918A1, and then finally the A2 model. Um, a lot of people see uh, the carry-in handles and the bipods. Bipods are very common. Carry-in handles, the biggest issue with that, especially in reenacting, is you see a lot of those... Uh, people with the carrying handles, but I'm pretty sure the carrying handle was a post-war thing. Uh, you see it a lot, very common in Korea, for example. Um, but these are just absolutely phenomenal. They're pretty durable. I got a bunch of them, actually. Same with these um, 1911 mags, or clips, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, 20 rounds of 30 alt 6 coming at you. Ooh. Uh, as most of you know, the BAR had two rates of fire. It had a slow rate and a high rate, depending on if you want to be a little more 
oh, well, there's my target. I want to suppress my target with a higher rate of fire, or I want to slow it down and be a little bit more accurate. Like I said, it is kind of hard when you're firing full auto 30 alt 6. That's a hell of a round. <laughs> Same round that the M1 took as well. So pretty stereotypical uh, magazine here. Like I said, they're not they're going up in price, so I'm glad I snagged a bunch of these while I could. Pretty neat. Last but not least, now this one's pretty niche. Um, you don't see, I mean, they're not uncommon, but they're pretty odd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. This is a French Moss 49 magazine. Um, like I said, they're not super uncommon. They're kind of wonky looking. I know everyone's like, oh, it's going to spring, you know, clip on the side. I'm like, okay, well, whoop de doo um, There's two models of the Moss, for example. Uh, you've got one that's a bit of a smaller variant, which almost resembles that of a carbine, if you will. And then you got a full size, which is almost something that your leg infantry would have carried in that instance. Um, I've got a bunch of these mags as well. I'm hoping to do a shooting video with one of those. Um, same with the Moss 36. I'll show you guys that one very soon. Um, the French weapons are pretty neat. They're nothing crazy. Even before that, you had the Berthier or Berthier, if you're just lazy and don't want to pronounce it right. <laughs> and before that, of course, you had your very famous LaBelle rifle, 1886. Um, my goal, like I said, ultimately is to do shooting videos of these. I just have, it's not that I don't have the weapons and it's not that I don't have the ammunition for them for the ones that I've done so far, like the Lee Enfield, the M1, the Carbine, 1911, stuff like that. I have them. It's just, I don't have necessarily the time or the location to go fire them. Like I said, firing a pistol or a shotgun is not that big of a deal. The rifles are kind of funny because, I mean, unless it's like a 22 or something, um, a lot of these very high powered rifles, um, I have to go to someone's land to shoot. I have land myself. This is my family's. It's just a pain in the butt trying to go down there and, uh, ask them like, Hey, aunt and uncle, can I go shoot? I'm sure they won't mind. It's just trying to find the time is all, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, but I will get around to it. I will get around to it, especially in the spring when the weather starts getting a little bit nicer uh, and we don't have these like wonky days of one minute it's 30 and the next minute it's 65. It's like, you know, good grief. One day it's sunny, the next day it's pouring down rain. It's just, it's always something. So anyway, these are the three, hold on. <laughs> these are the three that, come on, that I would show you guys today. Uh, the goal is to show you some other niche items I have very soon. Just thought I would show them to you while I had a chance. I'll be going home for the uh, Christmas season, and I'll be back before New Year's. So I'm going to probably film a little bit while I'm down in NC and definitely have some more content pump out to you guys. So hope you guys liked this video. Nothing crazy, like I said, super quick. Uh, just showing these magazines off. I'll show off some more stuff very soon. Might actually uh, break out some rounds and we'll talk about the different types of rounds. You know, uh, very common rounds. We can talk about very um, niche rounds that are uh, not necessarily obsolete, but more or less obsolescent. So, you know, oh, I want to go buy 20 rounds, but 20 rounds cost me $45. Like that's not ergonomic at all. Um, that's why a lot of people are getting into reloading these days. It's just a pain in the butt trying to go and shoot these surplus rifles um, and pistols and shotguns. Like I said, not everything is, you know, oh, I can go just to the store and find this. Um, buying in bulk is even extremely expensive for some of these rifles. And like I said, we run blanks through a lot of these weapons anyway. And, you know, for example, like you might get... 130 alt six rounds for your M1 or your 1903 Springfield or 1917 Enfield, uh, but you're only at 100 rounds for right at $90, maybe a little bit more with shipping and handling. So blanks are a hair cheaper, but they're really, uh, it's like I said, it's a very niche market right now with everything, you know, political, Lord knows what's going on right now um, with all the financial situations of these ammunition types. So there's that. But anyway, as always, uh, keep charging. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you guys want to do. Uh, someone suggested I do a Ruger uh, GP100 or one of the SPs. I think it was a yeah GP100 or SP101. 
Um, I can get both of those no problem. Uh, which reminds me that might be the next video I do actually. So um, I do have two pistols I might show you next. I have a really nice uh, 80s model Walter PPK in 380, and then a very classic 19, uh, also 1980s, I think it's late 80s, early 90s model of a Smith & Wesson Model 19 and 357 Magnum. Um, very, very, very common weapons, very sought after weapons. Uh, so I think I'm gonna bust those out next time. And uh, might, might do a bolt rifle next. I know you guys really seem to enjoy these gun videos, so I'm gonna keep pumping them out. Uh, and try to be as informational as possible. I have quite a plethora of information to put out. I just don't wanna bore anybody. So uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much as always for tuning in and have a wonderful and happy holiday season. And I will catch you in the next one very soon. Thanks guys.